Greetings, it's Michael Fackrell here, and today I'd like to share with you just a few verses from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, and uh, picking up on a very important idea. So it says here, beginning at chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus, and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And I just want to look at that. We've got Paul telling the people he's an apostle by the will of God, and he's writing to the saints, the holy ones that are in Ephesus. And he says to them by way of greeting, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That wasn't just empty words. He was pronouncing a blessing on them. Because when grace touches your heart, that's when the things of God become alive in you. And peace, that's what God's kingdom is all about. God's kingdom is about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Peace is the opposite of fear. When you have peace in your heart, you're in good shape spiritually. So Paul's wishing blessing upon them, which comes from God. But then he says something very interesting. He says that, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Do you know what that means? I often wondered about that. I thought, how could that be true? I look around the church and I think, have we got every blessing that's possible in God? When I look at some of the problems that are going on in the churches at times, I think that can't be true. But then you have to understand what's really going on here. It says that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place in Christ. What that means is that God has given every spiritual blessing. He's already done it. From his side it's given. But from our side, we need to receive. We need to receive the things that God has freely given. And that is what this is about. There's a lot of things that are spelt out in the scripture that God has done. But until people actually receive them, they don't receive the benefit of them. The Bible says that by his stripes you were healed. But many Christians walking around still sick. Why is that? Well, it's because it was made available legally to us. Jesus purchased it for us and made it possible, but we still have to receive it by faith. You have to believe that God will do everything that he says he will do, that he has done everything that he says he's done, and you have to take hold of it by faith. So faith is very important. Faith is what takes hold of the blessing of God. Faith is what gets things from God. Faith is what gives us confidence in prayer when we ask. It's just good to know that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. There's not a spiritual gift that's not available to us as the people of God. We can have every single spiritual gift that's written in the Bible and a lot of tremendous fruit and a lot of tremendous spiritual empowerment we can have from God. All these things have been given to us in the heavenly places in Christ and we need to receive them through faith, through walking with God, through walking in obedience to God and through living our lives with God in the Holy Spirit's presence. And then step by step as we follow the Lord as we obey the Lord these things are unlocked to us and we receive them why don't you just ask God that he will give you a full understanding of what he's already given you and teach you how to un unlock and how to receive treasure after treasure that God has given you and given to your brothers and sisters in Christ we've been truly blessed but we have to walk with God and meet God's conditions in order to receive the things that God has given and one of the important things is faith. Another important thing is forgiveness. We have to forgive those who've wronged us. We have to forgive those who've done injustice against us. Perhaps those who've ripped us off. Perhaps those who've hurt us. Perhaps those who haven't cared for us as they should have. Maybe our parents, other people. Maybe those who've teased us in the past or hurt us or stolen from us or wounded us. It could be any kind of thing. But God wants us to forgive those people so that we can receive from his limitless supply of blessings. And, you know, there's a difference between giving and receiving. You see this camera here. Now, I can say, here, take this camera and I can say, I give it to you. You know what? Unless you can take hold of it and receive it, you're not going to get that camera. It won't do you any good. The first thing that has to be happening is that you need to believe that I actually am serious when I say I'm giving it to you. When you believe it, then you will uh, call me up or something like that and you'll take hold of the camera. Now, I'm not actually offering it. It's just an illustration. But just to let you know, I've done this illustration in churches before. I've said, you know, the first person up here gets 100 euros or whatever. And uh, 
You know, the first person who went up, I gave it to them. The others just sat still. They didn't take hold of it because they didn't believe I was serious with what I was saying. And it's like that with God. He's promised us things. He said, I'm a good God. I'm a good father. I've blessed you with everything that you need in this life. But in order to receive it, we need to take hold of what God has said, uh, said by believing it. The first step is believing that he actually means what he says. We don't have to struggle to believe. We don't have to try to believe. If I tell my daughter that I'm going to buy her a computer game or something next week, she'll come to me fully expecting that she's going to get that thing. We need to be that way with God. We need to be fully expecting he'll do everything he says that he will do. My daughter doesn't come to me and say, Dad, I'm really trying hard to believe that you're going to give me that game or whatever. She just believes that she's going to receive. And it's like that. We are in a relationship with God. He's our father. We're his children. So we should expect that everything he said to us is what he'll do. He's for us. He's for the kingdom of God coming into our lives. He's for good things, holy things coming into our life. He's for us being equipped so that we can make Jesus real to others. Let's just spend time listening to him and following his promptings and it'll be amazing what it's uncovered and what we're able to receive. Well, I hope that's been a blessing to you. May the Lord bless you today and always.